Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. One of the most commonly asked questions which I receive is what corals are the most profitable to grow? In this video, I'm going to show you my top 5 profitable intermediate corals so that you can start getting your tank to start paying for itself. Now of course, you can make money from any coral you grow, but this list has been made based on my top sellers while also factoring in their desirability, growth rate and who can actually keep them alive. There is however a trade-off because the more people that can keep them alive, the more competition you have when it comes to selling them. Number 5. Galaxia. Now I'm as surprised as you that this coral is on this list, but I sell a ton of Galaxia, far more than you would expect considering it's pretty much a green coral that has a nasty habit of stinging everything around it. However, the sales numbers don't lie. Providing you can manage the risk of its sweeper tentacles by using flow to direct them away from other corals, this can be a very fast growing, pretty coral to aquaculture. However, the main downside compared to the other corals on this list is that their colour variations are pretty limited. For me though, I would still have one in my tank as I find them really interesting to watch. Number 4. Alveopora. Now there is a reason that Alveopora isn't higher up on this list, and that's because although it's a very popular coral, and it can be a very fast grower, it's not that easy to frag because it grows in a dome shape rather than encrusted flat onto a rock. Having said that, if you're serious about making money from fragging corals, a coral saw is essential in the long run, and I can assure you it will absolutely pay for itself. They come in a wide range of different colours and patterns, and although similar to Goniopora, they have a much higher survival rate, and in my tanks grow much faster. Another similar coral which I've just started propagating is Bernardopora, which do encrust, but have much shorter polyps. Number 3. War Corals. Without a doubt one of the most underrated corals there is, war corals or favites are easy to keep, fast growing, colourful corals which have intricate patterns and glow under blue light. What more can you want? It would be considered a semi-aggressive coral and do well in the mid to low range of lighting, and I usually place them around the base of a rock structure. As with a few of the other corals on this list, they do have one downside, and that's that they're encrusting. Therefore, if you're planning to grow these for profit, consideration needs to be taken as to where you're growing it if you plan to frag it into smaller pieces. Whether it's growing, it needs to be on something thin enough to cut and easily accessible enough to remove from the tank. So if it's at the base of your rock structure, for example, it's not going to be that easy to get out. Number 2. Leptoceris. What's interesting about this coral is originally they were one of the more expensive corals when they first became available in the hobby. However, that price rapidly has come down and stabilised to more reasonable levels after hobbyists started to realise they were incredibly fast growing, easy to keep and could be propagated easily. Quite possibly the most well known variant is the jack o' lantern Leptoceris, and this is the type which I sell the most of. However, there are a number of other types which are just as desirable. This is one of the things I look for when it comes to picking which corals are ideal for propagation. People love to group similar corals in the same areas in their tanks, so if you have multiple options of the same species, generally speaking I sell more of them. This leads me nicely onto the final coral of the list. Number 1. Cephastria. Cephastria are the perfect coral for the top of this list, and the main reason they take the number one slot is because they come in so many different colour variations, and even growth patterns having both encrusting and branching types. Many of my customers seem to want to collect them all, which brings them coming back again and again. They are one of the easiest LPS corals to look after, which makes them ideal for both hobbyists which are new to keeping LPS, as well as more experienced reefers. There are only two main things to be aware of with Cephastria. Firstly, they prefer lower lighting, and can easily be damaged by too much light. And secondly, they don't like to be moved, and will often change colour slightly until they're settled again. Right, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.